Right. So great guys, thanks for joining in and let's do a recap. Now the session is getting recorded. And Atanu, you have just joined, you haven't really missed anything. I was just doing a sound check and I was just trying to check if everybody's able to see my screen too. And since everybody can do that, can, can see my screen and can also hear me. So let's move forward. Let's talk about the topics which were being covered across in the previous session. As usual, whenever we start a new session, we do a recap, right? And that's what we would do now. So let's do a recap. I would request each one of you to do type in across the topics which you remember from the previous session. All right. And then I'll, I'm going to take across your questions and doubts. All right. So Mukul says it was search engine optimization. Absolutely. Yes. Mukul, you uh, had to leave last time a bit early. I hope you did check the recordings. And if in case you have any doubts, queries, you can anytime let me know. All right. You did check the recording. Perfect. Okay, so what are all things underneath search engine optimization did we cover? Because search engine optimization in itself is a pretty huge topic. It's a way through which we go ahead and optimize our website for these organic listings, for the search engine listings, right? In the unpaid section. And uh, the idea behind doing that is to get across uh, our potential audience onto our website, but when, whenever they're going to type in across keywords related to the product and services which we offer. Anu just says it was website creation uh, about SEO and keywords planner. Mukul says paid in the search, unpaid search engine results. Sobik says it was keyword analysis which we did. And uh, no problem, Anu, sure, you can refer to the recording later on. And Atanu says keywords and search query, we understood the difference between the two. Absolutely right. And Anu just says keywords, difference between search term and keywords, right? So difference between search term and keywords, we did understood. And uh, Anuja, instead of all panelists, you can use the uh, everyone option when you are sending across your chat. All right. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm, I've got a bad throat today. So just bear with me for that. All right. And Atanu says SE audit tools. I'll, I'm, I haven't spoken about the SE audit tools. I've just spoken about what do we really mean by SE audit, right? So, uh, having said that, SEO audit, since we understood what exactly it is, but well, how do we really perform that? We'll understand that once we are done with on page and off page in totality. All right. Atanu says it was also keyword mapping, which we did. Absolutely, yes. Right, so keyword mapping. I hope you guys did receive across all the, uh, what do you say, documents which I had shared last time. And Ramnik, I believe this is your first session. So you have you seen all the recordings? And uh, Sovik says, I haven't. All right, Sovik, you were, I think, not present across last time. That's why maybe, okay, Ramnik, do refer to the, all the recordings. I would request you to do that during this upcoming week. Because whatever we're going to talk about right now, even today, it will not get clear till the time you watch the, one of the previous recording at least, which is of the last session, because it's in continuation, you know. But try to grab as much as you can today. And uh, after uh, attending today's session, even if you don't get much, Ramnik, don't leave the session, I would say. Keep attending and keep listening to me and uh, keep asking questions wherever you get across. When you will refer to the previous recording and today's recording also, then you will be able to get the connect that what's happening. All right. Now I'm going to make sure that each one of you get across your, uh, what do you say, documents, guys. So Sovic hasn't received and Sovic, your C panel also has to have to be set up across. Sure, I'll do that. Uh, have you have you purchased the domain, Sovic? Do you have the domain with you? All right. So while we'll be approaching for the break, Sovic, that point of time, I'll help you for sure. All right. And uh, in the mid of the session, I'll make sure the documents also get shared across. All right. So that was just a small recap. Any other queries? So there is one uh, request which is from Sovic that which is the panel part also the documents. So Sovik and Ramnik, I'll share that across the documents with you. And uh, what else? Is there any other question, any other doubt from the previous session, guys? Were you able to perform across keyword analysis yourself last time, which we did? 
Did you guys perform the keyword analysis part? Mm. All right, Anuja, you did try. All right, if there is any query, any questions, any doubts, do let me know. Anyone else with any other question? Mukul Atanu, Atanu, I believe is in break or something. Right, okay, so assuming that you guys have tried and you have worked around it, I'm moving further or you're here, all right. Uh, okay, that was Anuj, I'm so sorry. So then if in case you have any questions, any query, uh, make sure you do ask me, everyone, any query at any given point in time, make sure you do ask me and whatever we are covering, that needs to be practiced by you, please. That is absolutely the uh, important thing. You can't miss on that. And this is, I did not uh, keywords with medium and medium keywords with medium competition in high searches. I did not find you saying, "All right, that is quite, uh, I would say, a normal situation." Anuja, yeah, there would be certain businesses. There would be quite a many businesses where you would not be able to find out keywords with uh, low competition and medium competition and higher searches on the other hand. Then you have to settle down for only for those keywords which are relevant to your business. Then you have to really pick the ones which are more relevant, all right? And uh, if every keyword is uh, high on the competition side and uh, high on the competition side, then, then you can just ignore the competition factor. Anuja, in that case, you would have to ignore the competition factor since every keyword in that case, in your case, is coming out to be medium or high competitive and you're not getting across, or maybe just it's only high, you're not getting any medium or low competitive, then you don't, don't have to really consider the competition parameter in place. Just consider the first one, which is relevant to the business. All those search queries which are relevant to the business, you need to pick and choose those. And then for the filtration, you do that on the basis of the average searches, right? Which could be a medium searches or uh, higher searches and so forth, right? Since competition is higher, then you can't really, then you, then you can't really make that choice. Does that answer your question? Let me know. Because that's, that's why it's uh, obvious with most of the situation with most of the businesses. Like I said, if you refer to the previous session recording, Anuja, I mentioned that only uh, niche website, when I say niche website, which are pretty unique in nature, all right, the businesses which are unique in nature, only they're able to get across such kind of a scenario where their, uh, what do you say, where their uh, keywords which they're looking for are good in terms of uh, the average monthly searches and lesser on the competition side. All right, so that's great, uh, Nuja. Then since this shows that you did uh, did work around this, and you've got a question around it, that's great. Anyone else? So, guys, I haven't really made it compulsory as of now to actually go ahead and produce the keyword analysis uh, sheet in the keyword mapping sheet. But today, what we're going to be covering across the all the other elements of on page and so forth, I would request everyone to come up with their at least those who have got their website set up earlier, right? Except uh, so we can, Ramnik, uh, that they can they can submit it maybe after 15 days, but uh, your five web pages with their keyword mapping and analysis is something which I would be needing across for sure. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read out more chats. Anuja says, I also want to know how to create contact us in footer of the website, but we can discuss it later on. Sure. Did you uh, get a chance to look into the WordPress videos, which I did uh, say that you can do a lot of research uh, around all of the development tasks onto YouTube? Uh, if in case not, you can do that, Anuja. Plus, still, I'll, I'll share it and, and I'll show it right away. And so it says there was a thing during keyword analysis where we had to select a industry category. Are we supposed to select only one or we can select multiple or we select all the options? All right, that's a great question, Sovik. You can only select one. You can only select one, you can't select all of them. And because if you're, if you're gonna select all of them, uh, first of all, the option doesn't come in. And if you're gonna get a bit broader uh, in terms of selecting all categories, it won't fetch you good results. In short, the answer is, you have to select only one. All right, so I can see some one more member joining in. Hey, hi, Shivi. Welcome to the session. 
So we were just discussing some of the queries which uh, participants had from the previous session. And I was also talking about the uh, project here, each one of you have, each, each and every participant has to go through, which is showing across the web pages, which needs to be created for the website, plus also the keyword analysis, keyword mapping, which is the first and the foremost step of the search engine optimization, all right? So for the search engine optimization campaign, uh, I have taught you the process of doing keyword analysis and keyword mapping. If in case uh, you guys have uh, somehow, no, you know, you're not able to recall, you have the access to the recording, refer to the recordings again and uh, do, that power, do that portion of keyword analysis and keyword mapping for your website. And like I said, at least five pages of your website needs to be set up across. So it says, and the paid themes, is it a one-time payment? The answer is yes. For paid themes, it's not an annual thing. It's not a recurring thing. It's a, it's a one-time payment. Or actually, we just trying to check if you are able to hear me loud and clear, and also if you can see my screen, just acknowledge in the chat window so that I can be sure that yes, everybody is able to hear me. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, answer this particular, before I move further with today's session and move further with the keyword mapping part, what needs to be done after the keyword mapping. I'll do that once I'm done with answering all your questions. And all right, Shivi has raised hand. Uh, so we, all right, I think this was a question from Anuja, all right. So Anuja, do you mind giving me across your WordPress credentials? I can show you how do you really go ahead and uh, get that uh, thing which is the uh, contact us and the so forth. All right. <clears throat> All right. I'm just going to make a note of. Uh, All right, thanks, uh, Anuja. I'm just gonna go ahead and open. So what I'm doing, guys, right now is I'm opening across one of the WordPress admin panel, one of the web, one of the WordPress websites admin panel, and that is Anuja's website. And the reason I'm doing that across is to answer a couple of questions which Anuja has got. Just give me a second. I'm logging in and. All right, so here we go. We have got the website backend panel open up in one of the tab. In the next tab, I have got what I've done just now. I've opened the site, the front end of the site in the second panel, the panel right next to it. And here you can see one of the theme has already been implemented by Anuja, and that's great. So this is one of the theme which Anuja has come up with Anuja's website is looking like this at this given point of time. I would encourage everyone to also come up with their, uh, go ahead and get your website set up. Now with regards to your footer section, we did discuss you have to go to the uh, settings and then reading section. I think that was the one. L let's just check. Settings in general is something which I'm going on first. So it differs from theme to theme guys, all right? So quite, it differs from team to team. This is not, not all right. So let's look at each one of those tabs one by one, and we'll find out where the uh, footer editing could be done. So, all right. Seems like it could be done somewhere here. It says header. Editor, okay, I'm just going to appear in section and then clicking on to editor. All right, so what is that theme which you're already looking at? See, theme customizing would involve 
changing across the code basically okay it will involve changing across the code as of now the footer of your website says theme by out of the box all right i'm just going to go ahead and see if i'm going to get it right away over here i'm going to do a command f which is okay it's not right up over here theme header theme footer all right so here's the file theme footer so what i've done i've gone on to appearance i'm showing it again for uh, for the footer section to be edited across appearance and then editor appearance all right on the left hand side in the dashboard and then editor and then when i have gone on to the editor on the right hand side i have selected themes footer themes footer is the tab where i have clicked on okay now the content which is displaying across in the footer let me just show you where exactly it is here you can see themes theme by all right this is the content basically all right theme by out of the box all right this is the content tenoja so whatever you want to change you can change it right over here so just delete theme by that's it only delete this part okay and uh, this part and this part if in case you want to change the url also so as you can see there is a you know hyperlink being done on this particular text which is called out of the box there's a hyperlink on this the moment you're going to click onto this there's a website called out of the box themes.com will open up so you can edit the url from here make sure you do it very perfectly i mean uh, by having a sharp look just edit this part don't edit this inverted commas begin and inverted commas close option and uh, over here also just uh, you know edit this portion and edit this portion makes sense anuja are you good should i need to write url by anyhow no you can absolutely go ahead and delete that so just delete that part and don't have any url right so your url won't be there it's just going to be the text which you will mention right out over here make sure you delete only theme by and out of the box because theme by and out of the box is the content all right so i hope you have understood how do we really go ahead and edit the footer perfect and then you can go ahead and click on to update file that's it now this was one of the questions of yours the other question which you did ask across was the contact us page for the contact us i believe uh, did you i had shown you one of the plugins i think it was this particular batch or some other batch the plugin which i have no okay that was another batch the plugin through which you can go ahead and set up across a contact us form the quite a many sumo.me is one of the famous one also or maybe you can just type in i've gone on to so what i've done right now i've gone to plugin and then clicked on to add new okay so let's so i've just typed in contact so contact form 7 all right so you have already got this implemented you already got this set up isn't it it says active so you would have to go ahead and set that up contact form 7 haven't you or are just trying to check so here you can see i i can see contact form right so you can just need to go ahead and click on to add new add new contact us form i think you have you haven't created one you have created no you haven't so you just have to go ahead and uh, set up across the form and you can see as the options are over here once this form is going to submit it what all messages are going to be there you can get across more information re related to this right from here i try to get it through youtube yeah absolutely just just go to youtube and uh, look for the ways the procedure through which this contact form uh, you know plugin is going to get implemented across all right so i hope that would help you that would uh, that would make you get across this portion what once it's going to be done then you can actually uh, get this contact form tab right over here in the menu option 
once your page once your contact form is set up all you have to do is you have to go to the pages section all right and click on to add new page that new page is going to be the contact us form page or right, so you already have that in the contact us page in the contact us page you would have to this is just a draft right now it's not been published you have to get the contact us uh, what do you say form implemented over here which you have uh, which you're going to be creating across with the help of this particular plugin so you can refer to the youtube video i hope that would make sense all those who have worked around it can actually get it pretty, pretty easily what exactly are we talking about okay so there should be a contact us form section right over here there is something called embedding of the contact us form which you will get through the videos all right anuja you can go through those videos which contact us form if, if you have any more further question you can let me know i can i can still answer that all right try working around it and let me know if in case you find any further more trouble and will help you then so your contact us page once it's going to be set up across all you have to do is you have to when you need the contact us page there on the menu i hope the menu portion was also being covered across you have to go to the appearance section click on to menus and in the menu section as you can see this is your menu right now all right you can get the contact us form so the contact us page will appear right over here once it's going to be published you can just click on to add to menu and place it right over here it would be reflected in the menu bar also you're doing well you're doing well in terms of your website keep working around it you'll absolutely find more success the idea is to just go ahead and keep spending more time all right so that's uh, with regards to the questions and queries guys which were there from the previous session if there's any further query from anyone please please feel free to put that across in the chat window so that i can go ahead and answer that respectively are you all good can i get a quick confirmation from everyone are you all good guys can i get a yes all right so it says yes satun says okay all right i am mokul anuja thanks and thank you shivi and thank you nate so let's move further guys with today's session so last time i have made you understood what exactly we mean by the keyword mapping process the keyword mapping process is specifically done for the purpose of distributing the entire set of keywords right entire list of keywords in the uh, in the entire website we have spread them across we have spread the entire list of keywords which we have selected on each and every uh, on, on different web pages of our website if we don't do that uh, if you just try to optimize a very handful number of web pages of our website for a huge list of keywords which we have selected then we won't be doing justice to it then we would be just going ahead and putting a lot of pressure onto very few web pages for good number of keywords which is not not at all the right thing to do okay having said that once we understood the keyword mapping why is it being done i also showed you the way it should be done right and for every web page i recommended that three to five keywords you know i in this particular website i have selected i mentioned minimum one maximum three keywords because this particular website uh for you know, this particular website which is in question right now was a pretty smaller website pretty smaller if in case you're also coming up with a very new website uh, which is going to be 50 100 pages strong not more than that you can just select minimum one and maximum three keywords but the more i mean if uh, if the size of your website really improves further it becomes more than 1000 5000 pages you can uh, you know you can you can go with three to five keywords also that's that's absolutely okay as the popularity uh, gets built up your website is getting more more uh, known across by people then you can select more more keywords per web page which is 3 to 5 i won't recommend more than even 5 now i did also mention that if i have selected if i have selected or mapped across one keyword to a particular web page i should make sure that same keyword should not be should not be part of the any other web page one keyword should not be uh, you know repeated across 
for another web page. This is something which should be, uh, which is recommended, which should be practiced across. If you, if you go ahead and do that, what the uh, bad result comes out to be is that the search engine sometimes gets confused that whether we should rank this page or that page and it becomes a uh, bit difficult for the search engines to understand and uh, also it takes time. I'm not saying there's going to be a lot of bad effect of it, but it will take some more time. All right. It will take some more time for both the pages to rank across for the same keyword. So avoid using same keywords for multiple web pages. Now, I would also like to reiterate the fact that the name which is given across to these set of keywords, guys, the bunch of three keywords per web page is called, it's called meta keywords. The name of three keywords per web page, they are called meta keywords in the SEO terminology. Okay. Also, another thing, I'm not uh, able to recall whether I did inform you about this or not. There is a new, again, one more column which would be created and that's going to be called as focus keyword. Focus keyword, in other words, is also known as meta keyword, guys. Meta keyword is the, uh, sorry, a preferred keyword. Foc I'm so sorry, meta keywords are these. Focus keyword is also known as the preferred keyword. And focus keyword is going to be one single keyword for every web page, all right, which we feel it's the most preferred one, preferred out of the entire list of three keywords. So as you can see, for every web page, we have selected bunch of three keywords on the basis of the theme of the web pages on the basis of the content the theme of the web pages we have selected uh, we, have, we have mapped across three keywords five keywords per web page out of those three keywords for every web page we're going to be pulling out one keyword guys we will be pulling out one keyword and we're going to be calling it across as a focus keyword hope that makes sense so every particular keyword is going to be called across as a Focus keyword, guys. I'm so sorry I'm having a bad throat today. If in case you're not able to hear me up perfectly, if you can just let me know, I can repeat that part again. All right, now the idea behind having this new column called focus keyword, guys, is to again give across instruction to the search engine that out of that bunch of the keywords which we are uh, targeting for our web page. We want this particular keyword to be given across maximum or the most preference, the most preference, all right? Pratik says, what's the difference between the, and that's all right, so, okay, Pratik, I think you have just joined in, that's why you have this, I have uh, said this multiple times, I'll repeat it once again. Meta keywords are the bunch of three keywords per web page, which we did understood in the last session, right? That's how we really map it across on the basis of the content and the theme of the page. So we would like our web pages. So if we, if I talk about the first URL, the second, third, fourth, all the web URLs have been given across, have been mapped across bunch of three keywords. And these bunch of three keywords are called meta keywords. That's the name. Now there's this new column, which we want to build up in the same Excel sheet, the keyword mapping sheet. And this new column name is called focus keyword. Focus keyword is going to be only one. All right, preferred focus keyword is also called as uh, preferred keyword. Out of those three keywords, which we have selected in our meta keywords, we will be pulling out only one keyword, which we will call it as a focus keyword. Now, what is the basis? What is the logic behind picking and choosing one? It's all out of the blue. Whichever one you feel out of the three is uh, one particular keyword out of the or total three keywords, whichever one you feel is more, uh, you know, most preferable one, it's it's out of the blue. You can go ahead and do that. There's no logic behind that. All right, so we will be letting search engine know that, okay, these are the three keywords which we will aim for every single web, I mean, for every single web page, we'll have the bunch of three keywords, which is meta keywords and also focus keywords. Now, having said that, uh, we have understood the meta keywords section. We have understood the focus keywords section. I think we didn't discuss the uh, tags part, or did we? The title tag and the meta tag description, did we discuss about this? No, we didn't. All right. So let's let's uh, talk further more about this. Now, once this portion, once this portion of uh, keyword analysis and keyword mapping is being done across guys, let me just move ahead with my uh, document also. So keyword analysis is something which we have done. 
we have understood what is a search query we have understood what is a keyword we have understood the tool part all right what does the tool really helps us with i have given you across the uh, what do you say the steps right this document was being shared by me uh, these were the steps right now before i move on to the on page the tags part and so forth which i'm talking about about right now i would like to let you know that in a normal agency format we were we were following that only i was i had given you the example i had given you the situation that i am a client and all of you are digital marketing professionals and you are up you have approached me and you have uh, asked me asked the client basically uh various things which the client wants to achieve right what is my business objective and so forth and on the basis of that you are doing all these activities you are trying to get hold of this business the digital marketing uh, business right since you guys are working as digital marketing professionals you are trying to let the client know that okay this is where your website stands right now and this is what we we'll do for the website and so forth now in this entire process which we have been uh, taking across right from our session 1 today it's i believe the 6th session or the 7th session whatever uh, 5th session i believe now with that being said after the keyword analysis we usually in a agency right at the end it's 5th in an agency format we go with sending proposal to the client now after the keyword analysis being done we send across proposal to the client we send across the audit report we send across the keyword uh, analysis and keyword mapping sheet and we let the client know that okay uh, various activities which should be done by us are going to be these and uh, what we will achieve for you in 3 months time in 6 months time and in 12 months time is going to be this this portion again i'm going to put put this across on hold right now which is i'm going to park it across because the proposal format is something which i'm going to share with you once the entire and even the audit report the audit part and the proposal both would be shared by me uh, i would share it with each one of you once we're done with the entire issue part because that will make sense for you that but this is the overall walk through this is the overall step by step procedure once the agency people have done the keyword analysis and mapping part they approach the client and they say that okay we have invested in our time we have done the audit we have done the keyword analysis and keyword mapping and this is what we and then they go ahead and invest time also in preparing the proposal the proposal is not just going to be filled up with the activities which would be done and the amount of uh, money which is uh, agency going to charge it's very important that the agency a good agency i'm talking about the great agencies they always come up with a plan they always come up with a plan which says that okay this is what we will do and this is what we will achieve just doing things is not the important thing but what exactly we will achieve now this comes through experience guys if you'll ask me how will we really you know is there a formula you if you'll ask me if there is if there is any formula through which we will be we will be able to decide we will be able to put things into the proposal saying that okay we would be able to achieve ranking on these all keywords in 3 months time these all keywords in 6 months time i will give you some understanding about it once we are done with the entire seo in totality but majority of the things would really get more sharpened up once we'll have once we'll have more experience once we'll uh, you know optimize several websites it's like that so the proposal format will be shared by me later on and then i can share across uh, you know another format which is called the purchase order and so forth i think this is pretty easy you can always even google about it so let's say the client agrees and client then uh, you know gives across a check to the digital marketing team as an advance whatever the remuneration has been agreed upon and the purchase order is being issued and so forth then after that or it's a keyword mapping actually comes after that only keyword after keyword analysis that's been done we saw that after keyword mapping the main activity of seo gets started that's called on page there are two major there are two major things guys which are done across in the seo world you have been 
the two major things. One is called on-page optimization, all right, and the other one is called the off-page optimization. These are the two major pillars. I'm I'm writing it across in the chat window also. Once the keyword analysis and keyword mapping part is being done. The on-page and off-page optimization, which are the two major pillars of SEO, will get started and would be done across on regular and continuous basis. Okay, that's we'll understand. So the voice is coming very low. Pratik says that is that for everyone? Is my voice clear, guys? It's fine now. Pratik says okay. Uh, Somik says to optimize a website, do we need the admin rights? Absolutely yes. Okay, Atanu, thanks for letting me know. Yes, the answer to your question, Sovik, is that uh, the uh, in order to optimize, in order to uh, optimize across a website for the search engine, organic listings, you do need across the admin rights. That is for sure. Because whatever I'm going to teach you right now, in with regards to on page, you will see for that particular section, you do need the uh, admin rights. Okay. Now I've made you understood that there are two major pillars, guys, of search engine optimization. One is called the on page. And the other one is called the off-page optimization. Makes sense. All right. Now, what does excuse me? What does on-page and what does off-page really means? Let me tell you. On-page, as the name says, on the page, and off-page, which is off the page, as the name says, on-page optimization, guys, includes across all the activities which are done or performed on the website on our website or the web pages itself. What is website made up of? Website is made up of multiple pages, right? There are several things which are there on the website, which the search engine optimizer is going to be working upon. And those all activities are covered under on page and we'll, we'll talk about it in detail and we'll understand how these are to be shaped up. For example, Example of on page optimization. So let me take across a website. Let's take fashion for fab website. Now, in this website, we what we can see is we can see content on the top, we can see the menu on the top, we can see an image, we can see some more tabs, we can see several web pages. Now, if I talk about if I talk about uh, any web page, every web page has got content in it, has got images in it. Changing across these things is one of the element of on page. There are various other elements, which I'm going to talk in detail for sure. So changing content, changing heading, changing images, you know, doing when I say changing, changing it to changing it to the changing it in a fashion, which is recommended by search engine and which is liked by search engine. Like what is liked by search engines and what is recommended by search engine. We'll see that now. Okay, so let's move further. This is odd page. Now, let me give you the example of off page now. Off page, guys. Off page, as the name says, off the page. Any activity which we perform as search engine optimizers outside of the website, where we're not going to touch the website at all, that all consists of off page optimization. All right. The example to it is something like this. If I, let's say, uh, I'm gonna take a cross example. Okay, I'm gonna just show you now which website. So, anybody who wants to share across his or her website, where I mean, not a new website, maybe wherever you are working right now. So, maybe on your, your company's website and so forth, I can go ahead and take across that as an example to showcase what off page optimization has been done for that particular website. If in case you want to share that, I can take that as an example to showcase. All right, so I can see more people have joined in. No, not really. Okay. Anyone who wants to share across a website or shall I take any website out of the blue? So what website shall I take? So if I take, now this is one of my, now this is a great website guys, which I'm a fan of. I do uh, go onto this website on a regular basis to keep 
to keep myself updated about what's going on in the internet, on in the search engine, in the internet marketing industry and so forth. So let's say if I want to check, if I want to make you understand off-page optimization, I'm taking this website as an example. What sort of off-page optimization has been done for this search engine watch website, search engine watch. Now off-page optimization has a different name to it. That's called link building or backlinking and so forth. Okay, in order to check that backlinking or off-page optimization or to explain it to you, so I'm saying different names. I'm using across a particular, I'm using across a particular tool. It's called moz.com forward slash research tools. This is called a backlink checker tool. With the help of this tool, I'm showcasing you off-page optimization. Now this is called off-page optimization has a different name, which is called link building, backlinking, or also getting votes for your website. So what I've done right now, I have typed in across searchenginewatch.com website in this particular backlink checker tool, just to make you understood, make you understand what all do we really mean by, what do we understand by the term off-page. We'll understand on-page and off-page in detail, guys. I'm just letting you know in brief, I'm just letting you know in brief exactly what does on-page really means and what does off-page really means, okay? Now, if I talk about, okay, now these are so many websites, guys, which are giving backlinks to search engine watch. Backlinks as in, uh, you can say votes, all right? Search engine watch has got, searchenginewatch.com, this website, has got its off-page optimization done by making sure that it's been talked about. This particular website has been talked about in various different other websites. So what the digital marketer for this website, Search Engine Watch, would have done, he would have approached several websites, maybe like Marketing Land. In the Marketing Land website, you can you would be able to see search engine watch a backlink to search engine watch website so there would be a backlink to search engine watch i'm just trying to check where can i find so i'm just doing it all right so there would be somewhere or the other text which would be clickable and the moment that text would be clicked upon it would make us reach across to search engine watch website any particular internal page of search engine watch i'm not getting it so easily as of now it doesn't it could be on some of the other text which i'm not able to see right now let me just go to the other website this website so even on this website there would be some of the other link guys if i'm going to click onto it search engine watch website would open up so what's happening various websites which are various websites which are featuring across search engine watch on their website all right search engine watch like as you can see there's a backlink search engine watch from moz.com this is off-page optimization being done for search engine watch. It's all about connections. It's all about getting links. Let me explain it again with the help of some more example. What happens, off-page optimization is very much like getting votes, all right? Uh, so in the, demo, in the democratic countries, well, how the prime ministers and presidents are being elected, they're being elected with the help of the, oh, what do you say, the campaign, the, the uh, the voting system, right? The person, the party, or whatever gets across the maximum votes is being uh, is being uh, you know called upon as a prime minister or a president. Similarly, over here, the website which gets across the maximum votes always have an upper edge in the search in the organic organic space. If search engine watch is getting across backlink from moz.com from marketingland.com and so forth. It means there it is getting across 
words or back or, or you can say backends, whatever. So the idea behind search engine optimization is not just to do keyword analysis and embed across those keywords in the website, which is on page, which we'll also talk about in detail. It is also about building connections with several websites, several websites of similar nature of same industry, which you are into and connecting with them and trying to get across backlinks from them. All right. Now we'll talk about in detail that why would somebody give us a backlink? What is the procedure of getting backlinks and so forth? We'll start with on page first and then we'll move on to off page. Is everybody clear with the basic uh, explanation about on page and off page? All right. Thanks, Sovik, for acknowledging in the chat window. How about others? Are you all good with the basic explanation of on page and off page? What is the difference between the two? These are the two major pillars of search engine optimization. All right, thanks, Sanuja, for acknowledging. Can I get confirmations? Can I get acknowledgments from others also? All right, thanks, Sovik. Thank you, Anuja. Thank you, Pratik, Mukul, Ramnik, Shivi. Are you good? Atanu, thanks, Atanu. Thanks, Mukul. All right, thank you, Shivi. Perfect. And uh, I believe others are also all right. So let's move forward. And Ramnik says, can you please explain off page? Sure, I'll explain that again. So Ramnik, I was giving an example of off page uh, by uh, talking about the voting mechanism, the way in the democratic country like India, United States and so forth, how does the prime minister or the president gets elected? It's always through the voting mechanism, right? I'm just trying to make you explain off page with the help of this example only. So the, the candidate who gets across the maximum votes uh, is bound to become across the prime minister. Similarly, in the, or in the search engine space also, there's a voting mechanism where votes are being counted across for every website. And the website which gets across the maximum votes gets across the topmost position in the search engine space. All right. So off-page optimization is all about getting votes, all about getting backlinks. So what the website owner, which is the search engine watch, the digital marketer basically of search engine watch would have done in order to uplift its ranking from the off-page optimization uh, perspective, it would have approached these websites like, uh, you know, marketing land or web reference or moz.com. As you can see on moz.com, Moz.com is a different website. It is not search engine watch, but Moz.com has got some content onto it. And within that content, it has got a backlink. There's a backlink. There is a text which is clickable. The moment somebody will click onto it, it's going to be the search engine watch website which will open up. So as you can see, whenever, so see search engine watch website opened up. Whenever the crawler, whenever the spider, whenever the search engine crawler basically would come to moz.com, this particular web page, it will find out that there is a backlink to this particular page. There's a backlink uh, to search engine land, to marketing land, to search engine. Actually, we spoke about this in the previous sessions also, Ramnik. That's why I didn't get much into much detail about it. And that's why everybody was able to get it quickly. But I'm saying it again. It is all about emphasis it's all about connecting with various websites asking them requesting them to put in across content on their website only and within their content requesting them or asking them whatever you can say to put a backlink also to put a hyperlink on some of the other text and the moment somebody will click onto that text which is being hyperlinked it's your website which opens up it's your website which should open up the moment uh, you know there's a click onto that text. It is still unpaid. It is still unpaid, but the off-page optimization does involve across uh, certain times the money to be exchanged across, but that money exchange, but that money exchange would never happen with Google. Why would they hyperlink? Because you will give them some sort of a, a motivation. You have to give them some motivation when this off-page optimization, either you give them uh, some money, either you give them some uh, content, Something or the other has to be given across from your site, right? And it's just a hyperlink or URL of another website has to go, ha, has to go there to create backlink. Absolutely. So if I talk about uh, Anucha, your website, let's say fashion for fam, when you will be doing a cross of, uh, you know, off page optimization for which this website fashion for fab during your off page optimization, you would be connecting across with various fashion bloggers, 
you won't be connecting across with various fashion uh, let's say related websites you will approach them you will send them across emailers all right you will send them emails and and you will ask them to give across backlink to you from your from their respective website and this backlink which is a hyperlink or a, of on a text which is on their website they will do it because you will be giving them something in return and that something in return could be either content either it could be uh, maybe you know some discounts from your website some freebies or co-branding could be done absolutely co-branding is another thing or you can offer even money across to them you know a lot depends upon what is the other person really looking for what you, what you will be really what you really looking for make sense perfect so it's a, it's their wish they will accept my request or not absolutely this is a third party dependent dependency altogether all right so hope any other questions guys make sense only those five i'm sorry atunu what does that mean only those five links no see uh there was this see backlinks could be any backlinks could be of any number i mean you can create as many backlinks as you can see for search engine watch there are 37230 total backlinks this is a backlink extractor tool which i have used with the help of which i have extracted the backlink which search engine watch has got right now you can get as many backlinks as you can for your website it totally depends upon you as a digital marketer for a website how fast you are doing it how many people are you approaching and so forth as of now there are 37233 backlinks for search engine watch so 1 2 3 4 5 i've just clicked on the top 3 one you can go to various others and you can see all these websites all these web pages in their content so whenever you want to open across all of these pages you will find across backlink to search engine watch somewhere or the other in the content of these pages makes sense so it's upon you how aggressively you want to go and create across these backlinks and on which all websites and so forth it is all about going ahead and connecting across with various website owners approaching them sending across emailers to them calling them up filling up their contact us form offering them something in return for a backlink if you have let's say you know in i'm i'm taking across example of anuja's website again so anuja is going to go ahead and approach across fashion bloggers she might say that okay i've got fashion jewelry and accessories and i'm going to go ahead and give you across uh, you know a pair of uh, you know this all accessories and so forth if you're going to give me across uh, you know a backlink from your website now it's upon them now it's pure negotiation guys it's pure negotiation which happens across in the seo space in during the off page optimization earlier there used to be if i talk about the traditional way of doing off page optimization which some people do use it even these days people used to go in and create across backlinks on their own how they used to do it they used to create multiple websites by themselves they people used to create across 50 websites by themselves and they try to get across backlinks from the remaining 49 to their main website which is not at all acceptable now google does get to know about such kind of things so you have to be very pretty you have to be pretty cautious about the websites from which you're getting across backlinks so not just the number of backlinks are going to matter but also the quality of the backlinks would also matter which i'm going to talk about in detail as we move further so the quality of the backlinks is uh, is of utmost importance if you're getting across backlinks from you know pretty smaller websites which are there only for the purpose of giving backlinks they are only in the backlink business then it doesn't make sense websites which are doing really well in their space and just as a normal activity they are getting into the backlink stuff you know then it's okay many people do the co branding part also like we did uh, some some of you did mention that i think sobik mentioned so it's like you scratch my back and i scratch your back 
you go ahead and put across backlink on my website and i'll put across backlink of your website on my website right so that that way is also happens right not b2b b2b is just business to business uh by, you know co-branding or link exchange is basically could be done between b2c websites also right so b2b and b2c is a type of a business this is basically you're asking the other person to give you a backlink and you taking a backlink from them makes sense so what we can do right now we can uh, before we go ahead and get started with the on page we can take a 10 15 minutes break and a smaller break and then uh, we'll start with the on page optimization uh, we will start with the on page optimization where i'll go ahead and uh, tell you all the various aspects which we as search engine optimizers need to be aware of need to be aware of and need to be careful about while getting this on page optimization being done all right so let's meet after for 10 15 minutes and then we'll take it further from there i'm going to go ahead and put myself onto mute and uh, all right sure so we so we'll just share across your uh, what do you say uh, godaddy access and um, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, get across the c panel setup for you all right so just type that across and i'll, I'll uh, come back and then i'll set it up for you perfect so i'm getting myself onto mute as of now All right, so the break is still there. I'm just trying to help Sovik. Sovik, uh, you have purchased the domain through Facebook. Can you give me the login URL, please? Where I can go ahead and set up across the name servers. All right, so what name server details have you set up? All right, so give me across your uh, piece. Give me your website domain name also, please, Savik. Give me your email address also.
I'm giving you a new password, okay? I haven't changed the username yet. Just give me a moment. Right, it's going to be the same username.
So I'm just trying to check, the, is it working for you? Yeah, it's been done. Can you just try opening across your cPanel and tell me whether it's been done or not? The password which I gave you the second time, uh, that is the one which would work. And we'll just begin in a while once so it really confirms. Yes, the URL is uh, website forward slash C panel. That is correct. Try the password which I've just given you. Well, it's happening for me. Use the username and the password which I have just given you. See, I can log in. Perfect survey. I hope now you would be able to do it, right? Uh, Anuj, it was nothing. It was just a cPanel setup for um, Sovic. That's what. That's what. So we'll now begin.
All right, that's great, Anuj. Looks good. Uh, I think just the homepage is missing some content. All right, so you've got your. Entire, what do you say? Personal profile being set up over here. That's great. Okay, you can set up across your blog. You've got your contact this page also set up. Okay. It's right up there. Okay. Oh, that's good. So you've got your. Uh, that's nice. Looks good, Anuj. Good job done. Good job done. Perfect. Let's move further. Anybody else who wants to show me across the website? Anyone else? Who, so I think it's Anuja and Anuj. Both of you have set up across the website to some extent or to some great extent, I would say. Perfect. So let's move further, guys. The other thing is, all right, Pat, that's great. Sorry. Now let's move further with the, my pleasure, Anuja. With on-page optimization, I did tell you what exactly on-page optimization is all about. On-page optimization, as the name says, on the page, all the activities which are done or performed across on our website or the web pages itself, right? And uh, one small note, which I would like to tell you is that we do need the admin access of a website for which we are doing the on-page optimization, all right? Now, the very in the first post, uh, the first and the foremost thing which comes under on page optimization, guys, is certain tags. Now, when I say tags, guys, it doesn't mean that you have to have certain coding knowledge. Don't think that there is some tag means a code and you need to be a technical person for that. You need to know certain C, C, Java, and blah, 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 whatever. What all technical uh, languages are there? No, you don't need to. I'll be helping you in uh, getting this concept clear and work around and you can work around onto it without having any technical knowledge. The first and the foremost thing which comes under on-page optimization guys are certain tags which I'm talking about. To begin with, let's say, uh, let, let's say if I would like to showcase, Anuj, one small thing, you can go ahead and change across your URL uh, naming. I'll tell you how the URL naming is being has to be changed. All right. So as we move further, so let's say today I have decided that I'm going to get across a phone for myself. Okay. Now, in order to purchase across a phone, I have decided upon a few phones. I have, uh, you know, uh, got my decision making process begin. My decision making process is on, and I have drilled down on certain. Uh, you know, choices. I have decided that, okay, I'm going to buy across. I've decided that I'm going to buy across an iPhone 7 for myself. So having said that, I go into Google and I type in my search query, like my iPhone uh, 7 Red, all right, my iPhone 7 Plus Red version. That's what I do type in across. The moment I do type in across, these are the results. These are the uh, search engine results. We have discussed about those, the paid shopping ones, the paid search text ads, and the unpaid these ones. Now, talking about these unpaid section, guys, in the unpaid section, whatever search results you're seeing over here, where exactly is this content really getting picked up from? This is the content, this content. So if I talk about gadgets.ndtv.com, this content on the top, which is clickable, which is in blue color, and the text which is over here, which is in gray color, all right, they all are being decided, shaped up, and inserted across by search engine optimizers only. And that plays a very vital role in the entire search engine optimization campaign. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start the entire uh, process of letting you know about every single thing which comes under on page. I'm doing across one more search. As I'm driving across by iPhone 6, I can see Flipkart, Amazon, Snapdeal. I'm taking across Snapdeal's example as of now to explain this concept because Snapdeal is, uh, is also good in terms of SEO. Uh, all the other players are also, Amazon also does SEO very well and Flipkart also does and so forth. There are several websites whose team, the search engine optimization team are pretty class apart. They do things in a very well fashion and so forth. So I'm trying to showcase you 
uh, showcase across those websites which are doing good job in terms of SEO. To begin with, if you if I want you to focus, and now I want you to focus. If I talk about one particular website which is Snapdeal, I want you to focus over here onto this search result. In this search result, what are you seeing on the top? You're seeing certain text which says iPhone 6 colon buy Apple iPhone 6 16 GB online up to 20% off in India. This is through organic results only. Then the second line is with is with regards to the uh, place on the website where this uh, page is right up over there, which is sort of a navigation. Then there is a rating, the star rating, how many people actually gave the rating, 7,033 votes for there. It is in stock. This is some more content. And then there's some content, which is the description of the entire product or the page in itself. Now I will explain across all of these things, what are these and how do we shape the blog. Now in a new tab, I'm opening across this page by since only one of the line is clickable, the topmost line is clickable. I am doing a right click by taking my cursor over there on the top. And I'm the moment I do right click, I am clicking on to open link in new tab. All right, open link in new tab. That's what I did. And in the new tab, what you can see is the page which is ranking across is right up in front of us. This is the page which was ranking across, right? For the search query by iPhone 6, for the keyword or the search query by iPhone 6, Snap Deals, this particular page was opened up. Now, this is pretty clear that we are, I mean, all the websites are trying to, you know, they do keyword mapping. They're not just going ahead and getting across their homepage up for all, all the keywords they're aiming for. So if, we, if it's an iPhone 6 related keyword, it's the iPhone 6 related page. Um, this is pretty clear. This is a keyword mapping part, which we understood. Now this content, which you're seeing right over here on the top, it says iPhone 6, buy Apple iPhone 6, 16 GB online up to 20% off in India, this entire content, okay? This is called title tag. This has been pulled up from that page, which is ranking up over here. This is the page which is ranking up over here. Now, if I'll go ahead and take my cursor, I'm, I will show you where this title tag content is there on the page. If I take this cursor and take it right over here, just have a look at my cursor. It's there on the tab. And do you see the small rectangular box which has come in? So it'll come for a while and we'll go. Now it has come. It says the small rectangular box has got content which says iPhone 6 by Apple iPhone 6, 16 GB online up to 20% off in India, hyphen snapdeal.com. Right now this has vanished. Now this is for the title tag. This is the same content which is right up over here. Now I'm going back. So this is one place where you're seeing this content, the title tag content in the search result comes on the top. In the main page, it's visible if we take the cursor on the top. In the rectangular box, it's visible. And if I talk about the source code, the code basically which makes the website. Now don't really get uh, you know scared that we are going into the code part. I don't know the code, but how am I gonna really work around it? There's nothing like that. So. I, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the code and only the small little things which the, in the code we have to be just aware of. So when we are there on the page, the main page, and we have to look at the source code on that page, just take the cursor to the space, to that particular space, which is blank, where nothing is clickable. So like this, maybe over here, and then do a right click. The moment you do a right click, it will give you an option of view page source, okay? Whether it's a Mac or a windows and so forth go ahead and click on the view page source now over here over here if what you can see is this is the source code of the entire page guys this is source code now the source code might really look like uh, french guys to everyone all right, this might look like French. Uh, this is so much right up over here. We don't want to go ahead and uh, really get into the nitty gritties of this entire code. The very first and the foremost thing in the code, guys, is the title tag, which you can see right up over here, which I've just highlighted. The title, it says title begin. So title, this is the title beginning. And the same content, guys, it says iPhone 6, buy Apple iPhone 6. 16 GB online up to 20% off in India, hyphen snapdeal.com. It's the same content which was appearing when I took the cursor on the top and in the rectangular box. And again, the same content which is right up over here. 
Now, this is the duty of the online marketer or the search engine optimizer, whomsoever you want to say, to go ahead and shape this up. Shape this up in the manner which the search engine is going to like it. And uh, also, what do you say, uh, give it across a preference in terms of ranking it up. All right, in terms of rank it, ranking the web page up. Now, how do we really go ahead and shape this up in a manner that it, it's going to rank up? We will we'll talk about it in detail now. So, this is title tag. Let me tell you the other element also, and then we'll understand what are those things which we need to enter over here from the perspective of the search engine. So, this is one sort of a tag, guys. The other tab, the other thing of a, of a page which the search engine optimizers have to put. Uh, put across a lot of focus across is the second one and that's right up over here this this content guys this content all right which is iphone 6 buy iphone 6 16 gb online and low price in india shop online for blah 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 in this now as you can see i mean you can observe the content which was there on the top and the content which is there which i've highlighted just now there is a difference in the character limits there's a difference in the the length of the content you must have observed that the content length is pretty uh, is is more in the gray section area which i have highlighted just now as compared to the content which is there in title tag this is one of the difference and this content entirely is called meta description tag it's not called meta keywords meta keywords was something else which I have already spoken about earlier. The bunch of those three to five keywords per web page which we selected were called the meta keywords. This content entirely, the one which I have selected right now, which is in gray color, this is called meta description tag. Meta description tag. I'm going to go ahead and open across my document which I've shared with each one of you, or if in case you haven't really received it, I'll share it again. In that, uh, all those notes have been made across by me. You can refer to it. Now, once we know them, we have to make sure that we set them up for every web page in the right manner. And the right manner is the manner which search engines like, which search engines prefer. Search engine optimizers have to make sure that they are in order to get across your website on the top. Now, let's look at uh, where. Let's look at the other two places: the main page and also the source code where does the meta description gets appeared over here since we have seen for titles so it, uh, it, it's quite obvious that we'll see it for meta description also so over here this content which says iphone 6 my iphone 6 16 gb online at low price in india blah 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 if i'll go to the main page the page which is ranking across i would not get meta description over here so the meta description guys it's not visible right up over here. Okay. Meta description on the main page is never available. The, the title tag is available when we took across the arrow on the top, on the top of the tab. But when I had to go to the source code, in the source code section, underneath the title, underneath the title, I saw in view page source. Yes, you saw that, right? This is the one, meta name description, this one, right? So this is the meta description, guys, which is right up over here. And meta keywords, if you remember, those were the bunch of three, five keywords and so forth. So this particular page has got Snapdeal is focusing across on these all keywords and they have named it across as meta keywords. So what you can see, you have seen title tag in the source code. You can see the meta description also in the source code and you can see meta keywords. Meta keywords are right up over here. Meta descriptions are right up over here and title tag is right up over here hope it makes sense right so with that being said let me just go ahead and reiterate this entire fact uh this entire thing is from the document the title tag is the text which is there in the search result on the top and the meta description tag is the content which is there in the bottom section of the search result right and in the source code, if we'll see, in the source code, the title tag appears like this, right? Title begin and title close. Meta name description, the meta description tag or the meta tag description, whatever you want to call that, appears right something like this, right? 
so title tag and everything. Now we'll jump on to each one of these tags one by one. And we'll, we'll start with title tag and I'll make you understand what all do we really need to do with these tags while shaping them up, while creating them up in order to get them created as per the search engine standards, okay? Title tag to begin with, first of all, it's been recommended that the title tags uh, character limit should be 50 to 70 characters, guys. Minimum 50 and maximum 70 characters, all right? That's the one. Now, if you go less than that, if you go less than 50, if you go more than 70, then that is something is of a concern. You should not really do that. Okay, now if we talk about the characters, guys, every single letter, every single letter in the title tag is considered to be a character. Even a space is counted as a character. If I talk about, if I go back to my Excel sheet, the same Excel sheet where I had shown you the keyword mapping over here also, as you can see the character limit, it's mentioned 70 character and I've got 62 characters over here. Over here, the way it's been, uh, what do you say? The way it's been calculated across is like, in, if I talk about Indian, so I is the first word. If you just have a look at the first word of this tag, I is first character, N is second character, D is third, I again is the fourth and then A is fifth, then N is sixth and then space is the seventh character. So every single space is counted as a character, guys. Right, hope it makes sense. Okay, so every single space is counted as a character. Perfect, that's great. Thanks, uh, Anuja, for a call. So with that being said, let me just go ahead and uh, talk further more things about the title tags. This is one with regards to the This is with regards to the character limit. The second thing with the title tag guys is that title tag always ends with a brand name or the website name. That is, now, this is not a must thing. The, the character limit was a must thing. You should not ignore that part. But when it comes down to the, uh, you know, the brand name to be mentioned across at the end, that is, uh, that is an optional thing. If you do it, it would be good. But if you won't do it, it won't make much of a harm. It's just that you won't be able to achieve across the best of the best uh, if, you, if you're not going to implement this. So the second thing which we which you need to go here with regards to title tag is the brand name at the end. Now when we say brand name in the end, if you will see in the title tag, Snapdeal has also done it snapdeal.com either you mention across the brand name which is snapdeal or you mention across the website name in totality so they have mentioned snapdeal.com the entire website name all right so snapdeal.com is mentioned right up over here at the end of the title tag hope it makes sense okay so that's the second element this is the second element guys of the title tag we do have brand name or the website name at the end. As you can see, Snapdeal has got brand name or the website name at the end of the title tag. This screen, if you'll see, this is a screen which is taken across from one of the search results page. In the first search result page, Flipkart has also got their brand name at the end of the title tag, eBay, Best Buy. The brand name is at the end and this is one of the best things to do. This is a recommended thing, guys which should be done across when it comes down to shaping up or creating across your title tag. Hope that helps. Now, the other thing, the third thing, guys, with regards to the title tag is the usage of pipe symbol. Now, this is the pipe symbol. I'm going to go ahead and sum it across the pipe symbol, type across the pipe symbol in the chat window. So it's a button which is on the top of the enter button and also shift. So pipe symbol is, a, is another thing which is recommended. So you go ahead and press across shift and the button which is on the top of return or the enter button. 
So, so, so while optimizing, we need to change the source code. Yes. And how the source code will be get changed across, I'll show it to you. All right. In the most easiest manner, how can you really share that app? How can you really uh, get that set up without having any knowledge, without having any knowledge of the code part? You can get that in shape and we will teach you. So as of now, I'm showing it to you. I'm talking about all theoretical stuff. Follow to the theoretical. I would be, uh, you know, getting this implemented right in front of you in the practical fashion. So in the practical way, how do you really, how do you really go ahead and shape it up? I'll, I'll, I'll do that. So usage of pipe symbol is the third factor, is the third thing which you need to do, all right? What you need to do when you are shaping up, when you're creating across the title tag. Absolutely right, Tanu, you have got the pipe symbol, yes, correctly. So I'm saying it again, shift and the button, which is above the enter button in your keyboard, the pipe symbol. Now this is what this is what uh, is being recommended. You got two perfect. That's great, Anuja. So why pipe symbol is used because uh, it's been uh, recommended by search engine. That's it. So there's no so the search engines are able to make a clear distinction uh, when there's a there's something else being talked about. You usually you use that across in place of a comma. I'm not saying that don't use a comma, but you can use it across. Pipe symbol is usually used across in place of the comma. And why these things are being recommended? Why is it 50 or 70 characters minimum, maximum? Why is it that uh, you know there is brand name at the end, or why is it that there is pipe symbol? These all factors have been uh, used across, or they they are being used across. They are being used across uh, by what do you say? One second. Yeah, they're being used across by search engines to rank it up across. Make sense? Yes, to get the best optimized results. That's correct. All right, just give me a second. So this is pipe symbol number third thing, guys. All right, the number uh, third thing with regards to title tag. And as you can see, pipe symbol is also used by various different websites right over here in the search results. So this is again one more search result screenshot I have got right up over here. So pipe symbol is used over here, all right, and so forth. Now the fourth element with regards to the title tag guys is the usage of the focus keyword. If you remember, I did mention that having a cross focus keyword is one more element which you need to have. One more element, one more element for the, all right, so Atanu says both side space is needed of pipe symbol. Yes, both sides space is needed for the pipe symbol. As you can see right over here space and then pipe symbol and then space and then the word that is correct I don't know. that's a good question all right and the answer for the to get best results absolutely yes it, it's being used for that now if you remember while we were doing across the keyword mapping part i have made you understood that keyword mapping is done across on the basis of the theme the content of the page and also i've told you that all the keywords which we map across to every page that they are called meta keywords. And one of the keyword which we use across, one of the keyword which we use uh, out of those three keywords is gonna be called across as a focus keyword, right? Now, the focus keyword guys has to be used across at least at most once in the title tag. As you can see, Indian real estate websites it is, it's been put in across in the title tag and it's right up over here also in the focus keyword. So the focus keyword, this is the element number fourth. Indian real estate websites, that's been, that's a focus keyword that's been mentioned in the title tag. So these are all four things, four or five things you need to be careful about while shaping up your title tag. Let me know guys if in case you have any question.
yes, this is going to be used across focus keywords should be present across for every web page. So, I'll, uh, so what happens is the title tag is not going to be just one title tag which will be put in across on all the pages. There's going to be unique title tag for every web page and every web page title tag has to have the same character limit parameter being uh, used. The, the character limit, the pipe symbol, the brand name at the end, plus the focus keyword, respective focus keyword for every web page has to be put in across. So let's say Indian real estate website was the focus keyword for the first page. So Indian real estate website would be used across the title tag for that web page. The second key, the second page is where focus keyword is this one. So it would be used across this focus keyword would be used in the title tag for that web page also. Same process would be followed for every web page. Every web page will have its own focus keyword which we'll define and we'll make sure that focus keyword for every web page is put in across in every page, uh, would you say, title tag also. Let me know any questions, any queries, guys. Title tag has never, has not to be repeated, has not to be copied. If you have created across a title tag for page one, it's not to be repeated across for the page. Uh, I mean, it cannot be copied across to any other page. All right, so Pradeep says in Google search page, there's not only one title tag and its content appears. Oh yes, the, I mean, every page will have its own con title tag, right? There cannot be multiple title tags. So every web page, so if we talk about Snapdeal, this page which is ranking up over here, only its title tag, the title tag of that particular web page will only be over here. There cannot be multiple. Every web page will have its own All right, so Pradeek says on Google search page, only one tag tag and it's going to appears. What we have to do for different web pages? For the different web pages, you have to create different title tags. So this process has to be done across for every web page. If you want about us, contact us page, even you have to create title tag uh, and have to have focus keyword for that page, for those web pages to Pratik, for the about us page, for the contact us page. Yes, the about us page will also have its own title tag. The about us page will have its also in on focus keyword. Similarly, the contact us page will have its own focus keyword with which will be embedded in it, right? Right. Maybe your keyword would be let's say contact. Uh, let's say your website is fashion for fab. So your keyword, your focus keyword for fashion for fab contact us page would be contact fashion for fab. This could be a focus keyword. All right, so he says, but then if we search for a particular product and in the results, companies have multiple results, paid and unpaid, why so? That's their wish that they want paid and unpaid both, so big. And um, so if I talk about Snapdeal, let's say, it's their wish they want to go ahead and uh, be part of the paid and unpaid both. That, that has nothing to do with the title tag over here. If you're searching for a particular product in the results, a specific companies have multiple results. I don't see uh, this question. Uh, has got any relation to the title tag part. You're saying one title tag is not to be repeated for the other one? Is that what you're saying? See, if I have in my iPhone 6 over here, for my iPhone 6, there could be the paid search result, there could be a couple of unpaid search results. Why is it that? Because They've got multiple pages which they want to rank in the paid and the unpaid both. Yes, I mean, that's quite obvious. For, for bigger websites, it's quite obvious. It can be. About us, title tag will be different as homepage title tag, will it be different? Yes, it will be different and still it can uh, rank across for the same keyword, that is possible. So the title tag for page one, page uh, two, would be different, but it might rank across with the same keyword sometimes. It's absolutely there. This, that happens across for the bigger websites.
Does that answer your question, Pradeek? Sovik? All right, thanks, Sovik, and thanks, Pradeek, for acknowledging. So let's move further. So this is with regards to title tag, guys. Uh, what all things we really need to have in title tag. Now, the next thing is the meta tag description. Now, we have understood the we have understood the title tag part. If uh, just give me one second, guys. One second. Just just having a sip of water. Excuse me. Now with the meta description. <clears throat> With the meta description, the character limit dies this time changes. As I told you that if you will observe, the character limit for title tag and for meta description is a bit different. Meta description is more, uh, has got more characters, has got more content, right? So meta description content, uh, the, the character limit for that meta description content is minimum 130 and maximum 156. Again, the space is counted as a character. Okay, the space is counted as a character. Another thing which one needs to be uh, aware of with regards to meta description tag or the content types is that meta tag description works very much like an ad copy. So ad copy, the way we go ahead and put in across uh, content across on maybe on a newspaper website or maybe across on a, what do you say? Uh, on a newspaper itself, on a magazine, what happens is those websites, those platforms, those media uh, are small. I mean, they do not give us a lot of options in terms of putting across uh, a lot of content, right? Always we have to come up with the great features of our product, which needs to be entered over there. Similarly, over here, meta description is being considered as that kind of content only. Content which we have to use for explaining the unique points about our product, something which sets apart our product from the other products or from our competitors, basically. So when it comes down to creating meta tag description, make sure you highlight the unique features, you highlight the attractive points about your product and get that in place in the meta tag description. Pratik says, uh, I've got a question here. If the character limit exceeds or is short, what is required, what will happen? You will not get across that, uh, what do you say, uh, great rankings, Pratik. You, you're gonna lose out ranking. Search engine is gonna give you across a negative uh, marks, you can say. That's that's the or disadvantage, basically, if you're not gonna follow those, all right? So coming back to the meta tag description, meta tag description content has to have things which are unique about your product which are something different about your product, something which sets you apart. Let's say you are you know, providing across, let's say, free cash and delivery, you're providing across uh, things like maybe, hmm, you know, 30 days money back guarantee, something which is an extra add-on thing which you want to highlight, you want to highlight quite a lot, you can go ahead and put that across in the meta description. So just have a look over here, what has Snapdeal done? Snapdeal in its uh, meta description, it does have it, does, it has mentioned free shipping. It has mentioned COD and AMI options. And if we talk about Indian Express, it's also mentioned. It, it has also mentioned one of the best smartphone one can buy. And then the other one, Flipkart says free home delivery, all categories and so forth. Right. So that's the thing, guys, which are which has been made part of the meta tag description. All right. So meta tag description content, the, the character limit is also known to us, 130 to 156, plus the R, it's been treated like an ad copy. That's point number two. Point number three with meta tag description is the usage of the focus keyword over here also. So the way focus keyword was being used across in the title tag, which is at most once. Similarly, focus keyword is going to be used across at most once in the meta tag description also, right? So like Indian real estate websites right up over here. Do not go where, go for more than one uh, repetition of your focus keyword more than once in your meta tag description and also in your title tag. Uh, if you will do that, it's gonna be treated across as a keyword uh, spamming or you can say keyword stuffing basically, all right? 
So as you can see in the meta tag description, it says Indian real estate websites. All right. This is the focus keyword which we chose and which we opted in for. So, so we say is meta tag part of some that's a great question. Do not do that. So the content which we have on the web page, we cannot go ahead and copy that content and place it across in the meta description. It has to be different. Maybe the meaning would be same, Sovic. Meaning usually is the same, but make sure that it's been rephrased. Rephrased in a manner that the word by word things have not been copied and pasted across from your main page, main content of a page to the meta description. Right. So the rephrasing of the words should be done across. Meaning could be same, but the usage of words in the same fashion should not be there. All right. So Pratik says, who decides that what would be shown in the title tag and meta description on the Google search page result? It's we as a six word like example of Snapdeal here, Snapdeal decided. Yes, that's what this is our job as the search engine optimizers to go ahead and create and set that up that the character limits would be in, in our hands. The overall brand name usage would be in our hands. The usage of pipe symbol is going to be in our hands. Everything is going to be in our hands. The content creation is going to be in our hands. We'll create that and we'll put that across on the website. I'll show you how do we put that up. All right. Just give me one second. I'm sorry. Yes, I was just on hold for a second. Right. So this is actually us who, are, who decides upon this. All right. And uh, we go ahead and first of all, get the focus keywords decided, target keywords decided, and we then shape up the title tag in the middle tag. All right. These title tags and meta tag descriptions have, have to be set up by us in the Excel sheet. And that's the job again. I want from each one of you also to do it for your website, at least five pages, maybe your home page, your about us page, your any product and services page, your contact us page. You can take five pages, get the keyword analysis and the mapping being done for those five pages, right? Once that's been done, then you go ahead and uh, create a cross title tag and uh, meta tag description for those five uh, and uh, and embed it across on your website. How do you embed that across on your website? I'll share, share that also as we move further. But from the theoretical standpoint of view, I hope everybody is clear that what exactly we have spoken so far with regards to title and meta. All right, you have to make sure that these are being uh, implemented. I'm not implementing it right now for a single page and so forth because it's pretty easy. Uh, calculating character limits, putting across pipe symbol before the brand name, you can put that across how the pipe symbol has to be used, how the focus keyword has to be uh, chosen across. I've told you that also how the keywords have to be chosen across. I've told you that also, right? So do that across for five key five pages, at least five web pages and uh, home page about this page, contact us pages could be three web pages and a couple of product and services page could also be used by you. All right. So wherever you feel you want more understanding, more explanation, more uh, questions you've got, you can go ahead and uh, mention that across in the chat window. What I'm doing right now, I'm going onto the uh, WordPress panel and now showing you practically how that is to be implemented in the source code. Okay. So what I'm doing right now, I'm opening across my own website and the WordPress panel of my own website and showing you the showing you the implementation, the practical implementation of title tag and meta tag description. Once we have once we have got them in in the Excel sheet. All right. 
So I'm logging into my WordPress panel, guys, for my website. All right, so this is the back end panel of my website, guys. And uh, over here, what I'm doing is I'm going on to the pages of the post section, which I have onto my website. And I'm going to pick and choose. So I'm going to pick and choose one particular web page, guys, of my website. So let's say this one, one second. So I'm editing across one of the pages. I'm editing, editing across. So what I have done, what I'm doing is I'm showcasing you how these title time, meta tag description have to be implemented on the back end of our website for all the respective pages. So if I have to go ahead and set up across the title tag and meta tag description for a particular page, I have to go ahead and edit that page. And while editing that page on the bottom, there's going to be, so this is the entire page on the bottom. There is going to be the SEO functionality, which we have to um, uh, embed across on our website first. Okay. I've already got that in place because I've already installed this functionality in my website earlier. I'll just go ahead and talk right from the beginning. How can you embed that, uh, this functionality on your website? Also. Step one for getting across your website, uh, website, uh, configured with the SEO functionalities. All you have to do is log into the backend panel the WordPress panel, basically go on the left hand side in the dashboard and search for the plugin section. All right. Here's the plugin section underneath the plugin. You have to click on to add new. Okay. So I'm adding across a plugin, a plugin, which is named as SEO Yoast. This is a, this is a word renowned plugin guys. Now the moment you have clicked on to plugins, and after plugins, you have clicked on to add new. This is the screen which is going to be right in front of you. This looks very much like an app store, right? Whenever we go onto Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, we get across a list of a lot of apps, apps, right? Similarly, over here, there are so many plugins. There's a plugin store. We have to search for the respective plugin which we need. So I'm typing across the name of the plugin which I need over here. And the name of the plugin, guys, is called SEO Yoast. This is a world renowned plugin. It is tried and tested in the, the top most plugin in the SEO industry. I've typed in SEO Yoast. You'll get this right across over here. It's already activated by me, but when you will do it, when you will be doing it for the first time, you will get across a button like install. Now you will go ahead and click on to install now, and then it will say activated also. So this uh, one, this particular uh, SEO Yoast plugin has to be installed and activated. For me, it has been, it's free. Absolutely. You don't, so it has a free and a premium version. Both. We don't have to go over the premium version as of now. All right. The free version works for itself. So free installation. Absolutely. Yes. We'll go ahead and click on to active and we'll activate it across. Makes sense. Are we all good? So you have to go ahead and activate it. Shall I do it for someone's website? And then show it across to you. I've got uh, Anuja's website open up over here. I can show it on this one or maybe someone else's website if you wish to. Anuja, shall I do it for your website or you want to do it yourself? All right, I, you've already installed it. That's great. So I can still show it across on her website. You go to the plugin section, click on to add new. Okay. I'm clicking on to add new and in the keyword section, you type in SEO Yoast. And then you can see it's already activated by Anuja. All right. So Anuja has already activated it across. And uh, if when you will be doing it for the first, first time, it will say install now. You just have to click on to install now and then activate it. Makes sense. Once you have activated it, you, whatever web pages you have set up, 
the second thing is to go ahead and set up across web pages and for every web page this seo yoast plugin is going to be there i've opened across one of the blog post page which is there on my website this is the back end of my website let me show you the front end of my website just to give you a clear picture so my the front end of my web page looks like this all right so i'm opening across the front end so this is the front end of the web of my website every particular web page has to be optimized across for the respective keywords okay now i've got so these all pages the home page the about us page has got multiple inner pages services page has got multiple inner pages case studies page blog page if when i click on the blog i've got uh, thousands of blogs so you know every day my team actually updates across blogs with respect to what's new in the industry and so forth so now i've taken across one of this blog posts the future of paid voice search and monetizing the map i'm taking this and i'm showcasing you how is this page getting optimized for the keywords for a specific keyword of my choice all right so this is the entire page you don't see any seo yoast functionality in it in the front end what you see is the seo yoast functionality for this page on the back end so this is the front end of a page the and the back end of this page is like this uh, anuj says repeat it again sure anuj what part do you want to repeat i'm saying that this is the back end of a specific web page all right and this is the front end of that same page what i was saying the plugin the seo yoast plugin which we are able to see in the back end all right for every particular page for every particular web page the seo yoast functionality is going to be there on the bottom of that page in the in the back end only all right but whereas in the front end you don't see that in the front end you don't see that right that's what that's what it is there so this is the yoast functionality over here and i can go ahead and choose across my focus keyword my meta keywords and mention right up over here so as you can see this is the yoast seo functionality i'm clicking on to edit snippet in the edit snippet the moment i click on to it the title the meta description all i mean i can go ahead and change all that all right so seo title it says the future of paid voice search and monetizing the map i can go ahead and put across the pipe symbol and mention across my brand name all right the green symbol guys just give me one second i'm just going to be on hold for one second All right, I'm sorry about that. So, what you can see, the title tag, guys. Now, I already had the title tag in place. My team has actually placed the title tag, okay? And my team had already placed the meta description. When you will create across a web page on your own for the first time, this is going to be blank. The SEO Yoast section is going to be blank. You have to just click on to edit snippet, and you you have you will insert across title on your own with the all those features. the character limit and so forth see if uh, this is showing in green the green means it's absolutely fine it's in the same it's in the character limit section had it been uh, red orange or yellow then it means it needed some uh, you know what do you say it needed some correction with regards to any of the elements same is right up over here with the meta description part also okay the focus keyword the meta keywords uh, my team has actually mentioned only one meta keyword over here there could be two three more which could be added on and focus keyword is mentioned the focus keyword has been used across in the uh what do you say title tag paid voice search paid voice search and paid voice search it's there so did, i did mention that the focus keyword has to be made part at most for meta description and at most for the title tag also i hope everybody is getting this process guys
till the time you don't implement it across for your website at least once or twice i mean i, I needed at least for five web pages for you to get this set up you won't get it these are the things guys which will actually help you to achieve across organic listings for your website are we all good with this and anu just says what is the benefit to showcase focus keyword or meta keyword on source code see on the source code uh, meta keyword will only appear focus keyword will not appear it's the functionality of uh, seo yoast the benefit for each one of these is that it is always these all things collectively are helping your web pages to be ranked across in the search engine space for the keyword you have selected at the end of the day these all inputs which you are mentioning right over here the title meta meta keywords and so forth are acting as the inputs for your entire seo campaign your entire seo campaigns basically it's helping you to achieve across uh, results it's actually helping you to get across organic listings your website would rank across in the organic or the unpaid the unpaid space makes sense does that answer your question anuja let me know so in short it is all about going ahead and getting across your website on the top All right. I was just like, how can we mention meta keyword? I'm sorry, a little confusion. Okay, no problem. You do. Till the time it's not completely clear, you can go ahead and ask me again and again. So, do you see the meta keyword section right up over here? It comes in the SEO Yoast. So, for your website, if I'll take, so this is your website, right? If I'll go ahead and uh, open the backend for your this particular web page, which is Taylor's Cut page, I'm clicking onto Edit Page. You've already got the SEO Yoast implemented. All right, see SEO Yoast comes in right up over here. And okay, so you have got, So there is a functionality of title. You can change the title of your choice. There's something already being mentioned right up over here, Anuja. You can change title tag of your choice, meta description of your choice, focus keyword of your choice, and there's no section for meta keywords for your particular SEO host. All right, this is strange. Just give me one second. All right, so the focus keyword is there, but the meta keyword section is not coming up for your website. I'm just says, uh, I mean, focus keyword can be implemented through SEOs, but not meta keyword. Yes, I was going to, yeah, but in my website, if you'll see in my your SEO, underneath the Yoast SEO, you have title, meta description, you have focus, and you have a meta keyword section also. And how is this not appearing for your website? I'm just trying to see that part only. Why focus keyword, sorry, meta keyword is not coming up for your website. One second, let me just see if there are some settings which needs to be done. All right, I think the SEO configuration used has to be configured across then only. All right, let me just go ahead and, so what you have to do is, you have to actually configure this. All 
or you would have to configure this entire thing and then only a new chat will come for you. So I can see uh, it's not coming up for your website. You would have to configure this by just entering across all these details. I'm saying it again, what you have to do is you have to go to the settings of SEO Yoast. All right, SEO Yoast is right up over here, Anuja for you. And then you need to go to the dashboard section in the dashboard section, you have to configure. So you go to the general section and open the con configuration wizard. Try doing this and if in case it still doesn't happen, then you can connect across the SEO Yoast support team and let them know that the meta keyword tab is not coming across. This is some technical glitch or maybe uh, they're doing it deliberately that they're not giving across meta keywords thing straight away. Okay, they have actually stopped it in the free section. I earlier had this, don't retry to, so it's absolutely fine. I, I can see that they have actually, I think discontinued this section, only one keyword, but meta keyword is something which should be there. Can you just try uh, contacting uh, these people? Just, just try to contact them by with the help of email and so forth and let them know that you know you're not getting across the meta keyword section which should be there pretty easily which should so contact section of yoast is right up over here and all right so here you can find their support email address and let me know what uh, so they won't reply across on sundays and so forth on weekends, but uh, just just send them across email to and forth till the time they don't reply back. Right, so let me just go ahead and all right, perfect. That'll be great. So just contact them and uh, you can let me know. All right, maybe you can type in over here as well. All right, so uh, guys, do work around this. That's very important that you go ahead and work around all of this. And I'm going back to the WordPress page, WordPress page where I was showcasing you the title tag and the meta tag thing. All right, so here it was. This is for my website. The same thing was appearing across for Anuja's website, except for one thing, which was the meta keyword stuff. The meta keyword tab was in there. Now, if you go further down, these are certain recommendations, guys, which SEO Yoast is giving itself, okay? So I'll, I'll talk about all of those uh, step by step. Thing called keyword density. I'll talk about that also. What is keyword density? The keyword density is not uh, appropriate right now. The focus keyword is found only three times in the entire page. It's point percent keyword density. Focus keyword should be repeated at least, uh, you know, on a percentage of one percent at least. Keyword density, what it is, I'll just talk about that. All right. Uh, then the orange things. So the ones which are there in red and the orange, these are the things which we have to focus in order to improve across the optimization of this particular page. This process has to be implemented for every particular page, guys. For every particular page, it's very important. Makes sense? It's very important word in uh, get every web page of our website being optimized across on the basis of all these on-page tags and so forth, okay? Now I've told you where the title tags and the meta tag description and meta keywords have to be implemented. Now let me tell you the other on-page elements, okay? The other on-page element, guys, other than the title tag and the meta tag is the 
URL. URL as in the web address. The web address for this page, which I'm optimizing right now, is this slug. Slug means the web page address only. This is the, as you can see, it says future paid, future hyphen paid hyphen voice hyphen search hyphen monetizing hyphen map. This is the slug. Slug means the web URL. Either you can change the URL of this of every particular page from the slug section in the SEO Yoast, or you can go to the top section of that page and you can see the edit tab right up over here in the permalink section. You can change it right up over here. This is the URL of your page. You can go ahead and change. Now, how this has to be shaped up in order to get it optimized for search engines, let me tell you this. This is the third element of your search engine optimization campaign site. This is the third element. All right. So the first part of your web address can never ever be changed, which is biocreations.ca. This can never be changed. The other, the tail end of your web page can be changed by you. So if you look at the web page, the main web page, this is the web page, right? This is the front end of the page and URL says future hyphen paid hyphen voice hyphen search hyphen monetizing map this one guys as for the search engine optimization standard it's recommended that your web URL it's recommended that your website URL guys should have the focus keyword in it so in order to make every page search engine friendly focus keyword is not going to be just implemented it's not going to be inserted across in the title and also in the meta tag but also in the web address okay that's what we have done over here also the focus keyword was paid voice search and the paid voice search is also part of this particular url guys the other thing with regards to search engine friendly url in, our, in with regards to making a web url search engine friendly is that there should not be any special characters used in the url special characters like at the rate symbol hyphen dollar sign percentage sign and sign and so forth these should not be these things should not be used across all right over here hope it makes sense and the other thing is uh with the search engine friendly url guys is that there should be there should be a hyphen used across in between two words if you have to depict a space between two words so there are three things yes there there should not be any underscore there should not be any dot it should not happen that two words which needs a space in between there should not be a space given in it and hyphen is a mandatory thing reason being search engines are only able to depict hyphen as a space hyphen is to be used when you want to depict the cost space between two words so if there is no space between two words, then hyphen is not to be used. If you're using a cross underscore, if you're using a cross and symbol, add the rate symbol, hyphen symbol, you know, any other special character that is not recommended. Search engines only read, they only read the hyphen symbol, which is a space between two words. Make sense? Are we all good up till now? Can I get a confirmation? If not good, let me know your questions and your queries also. Can you show the keyword in your URL? Yes, I did show you the keyword in my URL is the paid voice search. My focus keyword was paid. Then there was a space and then voice and then search. Right, Anuja? So if you'll see my focus keyword is this. Paid voice search. All right, perfect. Thanks, Mukul, for acknowledging. Can I get... The informations from other are you guys good so far with regards to title tag meta tag description the practical implementation Ramnik says yes Pratik says yes Mukul says okay uh, are we all is everyone else good so far Atanu says always hyphen will be treated yes the answer is yes no yeah so it says uh, yes need to try myself absolutely that is very important Atanu says okay no just says okay thanks all right for acknowledging that of saying yes and okay uh I, i'm gonna go ahead and move further with the other elements of on-page optimization so you can go ahead and uh, 
Now, once the URL naming of the page has been set up, the other element of a page guys is the image. If you have got images embedded across onto your web, web page, you have to go ahead and get them search engine friendly also. So as you can see, there's one image being used over here for this web page. This particular image guys, or any particular image of a, of a website is being read across by the search engines only with the help of one specific tag and that tag is called the alt tag. Alt tag or alternative text. These are the different two names given to it. Alternative text or alt tag. This is the tag through which search engine gets to know about, a, about an image. Let me show you how do we really come up to that. All right, so when you have inserted across an image on your web page, just click onto that image. There comes in the edit toolbar. That click onto edit, and now you will get across alternative text. All right. Now, this alternative text, guys, has got no parameters, no uh, character parameters, like you know what is the minimum and the maximum. The only thing with alternative text is that whatever the image whatever the image is showcasing you go ahead and put across things over there if you can insert across your focus keyword in any of your image that would be good or any of your meta keywords but never ever forget that the keyword which you are embedding for the for the image they should map match to each other it should not happen that your image is saying something else and your focus keyword is totally is is absolutely opposite to it if that would happen, then it won't make any sense. The first preference has to be given across to the message which focus key or to, to which the uh, image is giving across. The message which image is giving across, make sure you put that across. So in the alternative text over here, there's this lady which is talk, uh, giving across uh, some voice input to the phone. It could be voice search, right? My focus keyword was paid voice search. I think that was my focus keyword. Let me just check. My focus keyword was paid voice search. And I can go ahead and put that across in my alternative text. So this is my alternative text and Again, over here, in order to depict a space between two words, I have used hyphen here as well. Okay. Now, this is the way through which the search engines are going to optimize the images. And if the image is in sync with what the other message is being provided, it's always going to go well with each other. Okay. So make sure you go ahead and practice all of these things, guys, by yourself. That's very important. This is uh what factor um one second sorry so title tag was one meta tag description was another meta keywords was another one and that so total three fourth one was the url naming and alternative text is another one i don't say it needs a lot of practice absolutely i can understand so i'm going to restrict this today's session to certain things uh, up till on page only i won't start with off page i i can understand that you need to really recap all of these on your own and practice this till the time you won't practice it you won't really uh, get a good grip onto it the other element from the on page side i hope this is getting clear from at least uh, in a very layman language practice is the second thing which is needed Anuja says alt tag, Google will be able to read our image through alt tag. Absolutely. Google, the search engines are able to know about images, what the image is all about, only through the alt tag or the alternative text, whatever you call that. It's only the alt tag which helps us to get to know that. All right. Perfect. So now the other thing with regards to the on page, guys, for every web page, there are some more tags and these are called header tags now the way we go ahead and uh, read content in any newspaper guys what we see is we see the topmost heading first then we get to see some content underneath it and then after the content there is some subheading right 
and then some more content and then sub sub heading right so what do we observe in a newspaper i'm talking about a newspaper right now the main heading which is on the top has got the biggest font size the second the second uh, what do you say heading uh, which is the subheading basically has got bit smaller content size the font size the third one has got uh, the third one font size is again bit smaller so it's in a descending order it's in a descending order basically over here also we have the similar thing guys in the digital space as you can see the main heading which is right up over here we can select this first and we can place it across as heading 1 you can see there are total six headings guys there are total six headings the first heading is going to be heading 1 all right and then there is going to be some content which can be clubbed across as a paragraph all right so that's been clubbed across as a paragraph and then there could be some other heading which is a sub sub heading we got to place the crosses heading 2 now this is just for the purpose of guys managing our managing the entire web page content in a systematic manner and this entire systematic manner thing is also helping the search engines to read the content and give it a cross uh, priority give it a cross a shape and uh, this overall crawlability actually becomes much more stronger the way search engine comes and crawl across our web page is not known to us but we are aware at least from these tags point of view that they do read the title tags they go ahead and read across the meta tag description they go ahead and read across the all tags plus they prefer the crawlers prefer across the content which is properly shaped up well organized with the help of header tags also which is another tag hope that makes sense guys so we can use across at uh, up till heading 6 there is no uh, obligation there is no uh, forcefulness that you have to use all the six header tags guys if you are not uh, you know if you're not coming up with ideas with regards to so much of content you can just restrict it to heading 1 only you can restrict it to heading 2 only and so forth that's up to you right this is pretty simple and easy to understand right i hope uh, makes sense guys and now uh, there's a question uh, anuj sir is there any scenario is there any scenario that how many tags should be in one is there any uh, is there any ideal scenario is that what you're saying an ideal scenario is when where when you can use all of all the six all the six all right so ideal scenario is that but if your website is of that nature that you cannot use across all the six that there is no negative thing in that in most of the what do you say e-commerce website you don't have that much content how many heading tags in a single page six header tags how many heading tags six header tags heading 1 2 3 4 5 makes sense yes in the ideal scenario six header tags in the ideal scenario in a generic way in a generic scenario 2 3 is pretty generic but when you talk about uh, an ideal the most preferred one then six is something which you should go for perfect all right so i'm moving on further with the other things header tags is something which we have uh, understood now one more thing uh, with regards to on page optimization guys which we need to understand is a metric a metric through which we go ahead and uh, calculate the overall efficiency of the on page optimization of our website along with you know these tags and so forth the other thing is the keyword density this is a metric guys keyword density is a metric which is which we measure as search engine optimizers or uh, digital marketers right we measure this in we measure the usage of a particular keyword in the entire web page content this is calculated as the number of times one keywords 
is being repeated for every hundred words. Let me give you an example. So in my particular website, my so this is calculated for every keyword per web page. For this particular web page, one of the keywords I was focusing upon was future, uh, the paid voice search. Paid voice search was the keyword. This particular word, paid voice search, has been repeated how many times in this entire content, including, including the headings also, including the content over here also. That has to be that has to be calculated. That has to be checked. So this paid voice search. So let's have got it over here also. The paid voice search keyword, if it's been embedded across on numerous occasions in my page, it's always going to add across to my entire on-page optimization, whether it's used across in the headings, it's used across in the content, uh, in the paragraph section also, but make sure that there is not excessive usage of the same keyword in that entire content, guys. And that's what keyword density really comes in for. If my keyword, let's say paid, uh, my paid voice search, which is my keyword has been repeated, let's say five times, all right, five times it's been repeated and there are total 500 words of content on my web page. My keyword density is going to be 1%. Just have a look over here. So let's say the number of times my keyword has been repeated in the overall web page is five times. Paid voice search is used, is mentioned five times and 500 are the total words. 500 divided by 500 multiplied by 100 becomes 1%. The ideal keyword density, guys, is 0.8% to 1%. I'm talking about search engine optimization in 2017. Had it been 2010, 2011, 2012, if I would have been talking about search engine optimization at that given point of time, even 2%, 3%, 4% keyword density was something which was... Uh, which Google was giving across, uh, you know, a positive impact. But now anything more than 1% is being considered across more as a keyword stuffing or keyword spamming. So make sure that one of your keyword is not being repeated more than 1%. All right, more than once for every 100 words. So keyword density has to be 1% maximum, not more than that. As you saw in my web page also, in the bottom section, when we uh, went down, it says the keyword density is 0.3%, which is very much on the lower side. It says, which is too low. They're also saying my focus keyword is also not appearing in the first paragraph. It's also recommended that you mention the focus keyword in the first paragraph also, guys. All right. Makes sense. So that's what has to do with the this is what all about uh, keyword density is 0.8% to 1% is something which is recommended. So it is calculated as for one, for every keyword, it's calculated separately for its, for a single page. So if I have a second meta keyword, third meta keyword for them, it would be calculated keyword and density would be calculated separately for that particular keyword for that particular web page. All right, Pratik says, is it used to check keyword duplicacy in a single page? Yeah, keyword duplicacy happens when you are going above that keyword density part, Pratik. If you're embedding, if you're inserting your particular keyword again and again, more than one person, then uh, you have to really get rid of that duplicacy thing. And you're saying, is it used to check keyword duplicacy repeatness? In yes, that's what. There are certain tools through which you can, uh, you know, calculate the keyword density and here are those couple of tools you can use them it's, they're pretty easy to use all you have to do is you have to enter across the url of your website and the keyword for which you're checking the density it will you just have to click on to check and then it will tell you the density part one of the tips which i want to give you if in case you find that you know the one particular keyword which you have opted in as a meta keyword or a focus keyword you want to put that across again and again and again uh, then only there would be some meaning which will come out. But just because of keyword, uh, what do you say? Just because of keyword spamming or keyword stuffing thing to be avoided, you're not able to embed the same keyword again and again. What you can do in that case is you can use across synonyms. Synonyms of the keywords which you have chosen. Make sense?
All right, so that's about keyword density. All right, so I think I can talk about sitemap today or shall we talk about sitemap today? Is it, is it enough for today or do you want me to go ahead and uh, talk about the sitemap, the last thing? I'm just so please repeat your last sentence. Please explain about meta part keyword density. See, meta part is something uh, I was saying that meta keywords, there are three keywords or there are five meta, three, four or five keywords which we select, okay? I hope you've understood the concept of uh, keyword density that how it's been calculated. The last thing which I said, Anuja, is that for, that every single keyword, every single, so in meta keywords, you've got five keywords, let's say. So for all the five keywords, keyword density will be calculated separately for the respective web page. All right, so I've got one meta keyword, I've got second, I've got third, I've got fourth, and I've got fifth keyword, fifth meta keyword. For all the five meta keywords, keyword density will be calculated separately. For all the meta keywords, we have to make sure that there is a limit, that there is a restriction on the keyword density, neither way to more and not to less. Right, 0.8 to 1% is something. I mean, you can live with 0.6 to 1% also, but don't go less than 0.6% and go, don't go more than 1%. Another thing which I said last was that if you are facing a challenge, facing a challenge with regards to usage of a specific keyword in your web page, the challenge is that you're not able to embed same keyword again and again, uh, which you want to in order to make sense in order to get across uh, meaning of your web then in that case you can even use across synonyms synonyms of the meta keywords which you have chosen all right that was the last thing which i didn't mention so these are quite many things about on page guys if it's becoming way too heavy today i can wrap up the session uh, up till here and uh, if you think i you can consume in some more content i can i can talk about some more things with regards to on page. So with regards to on page, there is one more thing, which is sitemap, which is the last thing about on page. I can talk about it. I, what I would want you to do is to actually go ahead and refresh these things again and, and implement. I think so we should work on this first. Sure. Absolutely. You can work on these elements guys first. All right. And, uh, you, you do have, uh, uh, you know, the entire week to work around it, onto it. There were queries you know, people do. Anything else, guys, before, uh, anything else which you want to ask before we go ahead and wrap up our session for today then? Yes, you, should, you have to really go ahead and practice this first. Recap, sure, absolutely. It was a bit heavy. So we'll start with, we started today with uh, almost on page optimization only the first thing with on page we started was we understood what exactly we mean by the tags i made you understood what title tag is what meta tag description is where does it really appear where does it appear in the search result where does it appear in the source code also i made you understood this and i made you understood that what are the parameters on the basis of which the title tag has to be created 50 to 70 characters we even a space is counted as a character for that in the title tag, you have to make sure that there is brand name or the website name at the end of the title tag that should be used. Plus, I made you understood the usage of pipe symbol to be there. Then I told you the other parameter is the usage of focused, focus keyword at most once. Webmaster will come on to it later on. Once we are done with on page and full, I'll talk about webmaster also. All right. Title tag contains uh content related to what the web page is all about whereas when we understood meta tag description the character limit is 130 to 156 character and treat meta description like an ad copy as in what are the benefits and so forth i gave you the examples also all right then comes in the usage of focus keyword also has to be at most once in the meta tag keyword then we uh, went ahead and understood what do we need to do with regards to the url naming for every specific web page the focus keyword has to be there hyphen has to be used no special character then i made you understood the alternative text or the alt tag the focus keyword needs to be there and that also 
Then I made you understood the usage of header tags. And what do we mean by keyword density and what, what is the ideal keyword density? Right, so we have covered up till here. Sitemap is something which we'll start with tomorrow. We'll understood sitemap and then we'll also do Google Webmaster. I'll, I'll make it. So Google Webmaster actually will not be covered after this. Google Webmaster is something and some more is going to be after off page. Right, so Google Webmaster is right up over here. Okay, yes, please go ahead with your question. Sure. And on alternative text, why we use it to go ahead and let it to let the search engine know about the images which we are using. Alternative text are used across for optimizing our web page, or sorry, our web image. And the image, once it gets optimized, it's helping the entire entire web page also. So the answer to all of these, why are we using this? Why are we using that? The answer to all of those is to actually strengthen our SEO campaign to get across what is the end objective to make our website rank higher on the search results. That's what. So that's the end objective. That's the answer to this question. The idea behind doing all of these activities is to get across our website on the top for the targeted search or targeted keywords. All right, so any further questions, any further queries, guys, you have, feel free to put that across in the chat window. All right, this is Anuja and Anuj both have same images in their web pages. How do I get those type of images? I've got some images. But they must have, uh, so you have to embed across, insert across images that are on your own. And Anand just says, without alt tag, Google will not be able to read the image. The answer is yes. Without the alt tag, you cannot. Or when search engines will not be able to. So images you have to embed uh, on your own. And you're saying uh, Google will automatically select something. No, Google will not automatically select something. You have to embed the code, uh, the alt tag by yourself, and then only Google will get to know. All right, so any further questions or any further queries, guys, you have, feel free to put that across in the chat window. These images which you get across is by inserting them across on your own. So if I can go ahead and embed across image within my content by taking the cursor on the place where I want the image. So let's say I want the image right over here in between this line and in this line. That's what I'm showing you, Atanu. So let's say in between this line and this particular uh, paragraph, I want the image. So I'll take the cursor right over there and then I'll click on to add media. The moment I'll click on to add media, I'll get across an option of uploading it right on my own. All right. So I can upload it from whichever place I want to. So let's say I want a specific, so these are certain images which I've uploaded before. I can go ahead and embed across, let's say this image. I'm clicking on to insert into post. Right, so the image has got embedded right up over here. So you can upload across from the, from your specific computer or laptop and as well. So you can refer to several videos around. You have to play around with these tools, you know. I think you haven't really uh, done anything. You got it. Okay. You have to work around on the WordPress and all of these things in order to get it across perfectly. Make sure you refer to these recordings and, uh, you know, do all these things in order to get across uh, a perfect grip onto it. Till the time you won't do it yourself, uh, there won't be proper benefit which you're going to receive across all right yes please someone yes go ahead with the question all right anyone else with any other questions can please uh, please do Put that across in the chat window so that I can go ahead and answer that respectively. All 
Uh, proposal document is something which I'm going to share across once the SEO is done in full. Questionnaire and all the documents were being shared by me in the previous sessions, Anuja. Haven't you got the uh, questionnaire and uh, the other doc, this same, this doc which I'm using. So it says how similar is working on WordPress and other tools like Drupal. Pretty similar, not very smaller differences are there. So very minute differences are there. Otherwise, if you are able to work across onto, uh, if you're able to work across onto, uh, you know, any one of those, you can work on the other ones easily. Right, Anuja, if you don't get that, you can connect with uh, all the other batchmates. All right. Uh, I think you guys have your own WhatsApp group, right? So you can check with each other in case, uh, I mean, try to help each other out with all these one little things also. WordPress is the most preferred, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. But then it says, please recap the alt tag again. I've, I, if, if there is already an embedded image, do I still go through the alt tag process for Google to absolutely you have to go through that process to make Google recognize it? So this is the image. I will go ahead and click. I have clicked onto the image and I'll get this toolbar. I'll click on to edit. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the alternative text right up over here. All right. As for what my, what the image is saying and so forth and what my focus keyword is. I'm going to embed that. And Pratik says, as compared to Drupal, et cetera, WordPress is most preferred. That is yes. The answer is yes, Pratik. And we just says yes, if the website is not on WordPress or any other CMS, then how can on page meta with that is implemented? FTP or cPanel, then in that case, Anuja, in, uh, in that case, you have to uh, know the coding part, all right? If you don't have it on CMS, that's the reason why we do it across on, uh, you know, CMS like WordPress and so forth. And uh, to, in, today is, in, in today's overall uh, technology, the technology which is used across all the website, the same and so forth. Right. Great questions. Any further questions, guys? Let me know so that I can go ahead and answer that respectively. All right, so I think uh, there are no further more questions. Thank you so much, Savik, for saying it's a, it was a good session. I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch across the poll, guys, once again. And All right, then it just says need to work a lot on now. Absolutely, yes. It should be done across. Okay, guys, I have launched across the poll and would request each and everyone to please give it across your valuable feedback. How would you rate this session on a scale of one to five? One being poor and five being excellent. All right, thank you so much for uh, the poll. I think everybody has done that. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, we will meet across tomorrow, same time, and we'll take it further from there. All right, take care. Have a great rest of the day. Or take, or have a great night, depending upon what time zone you are in, and we'll be meeting same time tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.